Hey guys, Jehu here. Once again, I'm gonna show you how to make a DIY project. Today, we're gonna be looking at the Tesla Powerwall. The Tesla Powerwall. The fact that it's wall mounted is, is vital. It, I mean, it's flat against the wall, it, so it gives you safety, security, and affordable solution. What is it? The power wall is a battery for your house. Yeah, it's a home battery. To explain to you why it's a good idea and how it works, let's look at this following video. The power wall is a battery for your home. Why does your home need a battery? A battery can be used as a backup when there is a service interruption sort of like a generator. It could also be used to store energy from solar panels. And it could also be used for saving money by buying electricity at night when utilities have off-peak price rates and using the stored energy during the day when the price is higher. Tesla will sell two versions of its Powerwall, a seven kilowatt hour version for 3,000 US dollars and a 10 kilowatt version for 3,500 US dollars. All right, now that we understand what the Powerwall does, let's go buy one. Ah, there's the problem. As far as I've read, the whole 2016 production is already sold out. So that's why today I'm gonna show you how to make your own. Okay, the first thing to figure out is what kind of batteries you can use. Lead acid batteries, those are big, heavy, they're toxic. You don't want those in your garage. You could use some of these nickel metal hydrate batteries, but those are the ones that have the memory. So if you don't ch discharge them all the way through like an entire cycle, then they stop working and you know, because of the memory thing. So this is all technology. They're kind of expensive, they're hard to get. You don't need that. You could use lithium. Lithium is the way to go. This is a lithium iron phosphate cell. This is available. They're thin and then you can put them side to side, connect them. Uh, they're light, they're, the power density is pretty good. They're pretty safe, they're non-toxic. And so this is a good, a good choice. You can use them. Today I'm not gonna use these because I have something better. The best thing to get would be these guys. This is an 18650. This is exactly what Tesla uses on their batteries for their cars and for the power wall. First of all, how do you get these cells on eBay? What you do is you buy dead laptop batteries, you take them apart, and then you pull these cells out. Then you have to test them and stuff. And I have videos showing you exactly how I did that. I'm gonna link them right here so that you guys can watch them. Go watch those after you watch this video and it'll show you exactly how to do that thing. After you sort them out and you separate the good ones from the bad ones, then what you can do is then you start putting them together sort of like in this brick. This brick right here is, you know, just a little bit over one kilowatt of energy and it's got 150 cells all in parallel. This is one big giant 3.7 volts battery. This has a bunch of built-in features. It's got a bunch of these little fuses right here. If any of these battery were to die or goes into reversal or shorts out, then that little fuse blows if it sees more than six amps and then it keeps your battery safe. This is exactly how Tesla does it. And that's how I have, I'm gonna build my power wall. And so I have that video go check it out after this video so, so you can see in more in depth how to make that battery. So, now, what do we do next? First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the plywood plate that we're gonna put in the wall. We're gonna use this to make the box to put the batteries in. And I have decided and chosen to do it 21 and a half inches by 29 inches long. This size is kind of randomly chosen just because it's a little bit bigger with my, my batteries are and so I'm giving myself a little bit of wiggle room to be able to run wiring and all this other stuff. So let's start. All 
right, now that we're done, uh, we made the box. We just put these sides here and I painted it black so it looks nice. It's gonna be like this in the wall. The battery's gonna be in here. These are the sides. Yeah, you wanna see just black on the sides, right? All right, let's put the battery in there. Now that we put the batteries in here, I have decided to split them to the sides here and then just use a single piece here to hold them. This space here could be used for the connection, maybe some electronics here. Figure out how we can hold these batteries. All right, so I've decided that two of these little things are, are sufficient enough to hold those plates in there. But before we hang this in the wall, let's talk about how much energy is stored in these cells. There are 300 cells here. There are 300 more cells in here. So there's a total of 600. Each cell is at least 2,000 milliamps. Um, if you multiply 2000 milliamps times 3.7 volts, which is the nominal voltage of these cells, equals 7.4 watt hours per cell. If you multiply that times 600 of these cells, then you come out with 4,440 watt hours. So 4.4 kilowatts of power in this, in this group of cells here and so how do you wire that well you can wire them in a bunch of different ways you can group these cells however you want but the most logical ways to do it of course are going to be uh according to whatever inverter that you're going to use so basically this is dc power you're going to have to convert it into ac so that you can use it in household appliances what comes out of your sockets are it's ac and so you need an inverter this is a this is a device that converts the DC into AC. And so they're usually set up to work either on 12 volts, right? The smaller ones. And then the bigger ones, they start working on 24 volts, 36 or 48. I think the bigger, the biggest ones that can run an entire house usually run on 48 volts. And so depending on which device you're going to use, uh, which inverter you're going to choose, to, to use with this cell, then that's gonna determine how you're gonna wire these cells. How do you do that? Well, if you wanna wire it for 12 volts, that means you're gonna have to have three groups of cells. You're gonna have to divide the 600 into three, and that's how many uh, are gonna, you're gonna wire parallel together. So if you're gonna wanna run them on uh, 24 volts, then that means you're gonna have to take the 600 cells, divide them by six, which is 100, and then those are gonna be your groups, groups of 100 cells, and you're gonna wire those in parallel. The six groups, you then are gonna have to wire them in series so that you can get 24 volts. Uh, and so on and so on 36 you're gonna have to you know the, the groups are gonna be smaller 48 the groups are even gonna get smaller so now that we've said all of that let's go and install this on the wall we're gonna use our level here it's right there Right, we're gonna, I'm gonna connect some of these guys so that we can disconnect, connect and disconnect through contactors. All right guys, so here it is. This is the power wall. This is the insides, here are the cells. There's a cable that comes from the two, then I put it connected to another cable that goes and then connects to the, um, contactors and then from the contactors it goes out and then those cables right here that's what's gonna go into your inverter whatever we decide to use as an inverter um, and then from there it goes into either this thing right here to charge a vehicle or it goes into the wiring for your house or your building so that um, it could 
it could power your house. Right into the inverter, that's what you would connect the solar panels if that's what you would do. And so from the solar panel, they would go into the inverter and then the inverter would charge these batteries. There's some inverters that have that feature built in, the, in there so that they can maintain the batteries at a certain state of charge. So the only thing left for us to do here is to cover the, that, that hole so that all that stuff's not exposed. I got something special for that. Look at this. Yeah, this is a piece of glass and you can put whatever you want on here and I decided to put test. So, so let's see what it looks like there. All right, so there it is. This is our power wall, our DIY power wall, right? 4.4 kilowatts. How much did it cost us to do this? Well, let's see, when I was buying all the dead laptop batteries, uh, I did the math and it came out to be about 30 cents per cell. There's 600 cells in this box here, so that comes at around $180. Add another $20 for the wood that we use here to make the box, add 100 bucks for this glass right here that I made, and uh, you could pretty much put whatever picture you want here, I will uh, link up to this service that, can, that will make this glass and you can put whatever, you can put a picture of your face, you can put your family, your brand, whatever you, I, in this case I, I chose to do the Tesla so it'll look like a Tesla power wall. Um, you're looking at about $300. 4.4 kilowatts, $300 cost, you, you know, for about a thousand bucks, you could do another three of these and that will yield you about 13 and a half kilowatts. It's a better deal than Tesla's offering, right? So, um, with $3,500, you could be somewhere around 20 kilowatts, 30 kilowatts, you know, if you if you do it right. So you save quite a bit. I know it's a, it's a lot of work to do all this stuff, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be an expert. You'll be going through these and getting them up in the wall in no time. All right, next time we will show you how to pick the best inverter for your application, uh, which ones are better for solar, which ones are better for charging your car, which ones are just, you know, better for just powering your house using the grid. Okay, so stay tuned for that video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. We'll be back next week at the same time. Rock and roll. No, what is that? No, I don't like that. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to leave some comments below. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also think about becoming our patron by following the patron link. Uh, and don't forget to follow me on social media. All right guys, see you guys tomorrow. Let's take a picture of this thing. What do you think? Like, uh, so, so right there? I don't know. It's missing something. Let me try something. <laughs> All right, that's the picture right there. That's a wrap. <laughs>